Hey guys, so if you don't follow me on Twitter, which you should, uh, Huawei was kind enough to fly me out to Munich, Germany for their Mate 10 and Mate 10 Pro launch event. Hook me up with a Mate 10 Pro for review and sponsor this video, but as much as I like how they roll, you guys know me, I'm still gonna keep it real with you all. That being said, only having actually used the phone for a little over 24 hours, my first impressions of it are fairly positive at the moment. Like I'm impressed, but not convinced quite yet, you know? Anyways, as far as the design's concerned, I think it looks great. Um, the Mate 10 Pro will come in four colors, Midnight Blue, which is my favorite, Mocha Brown and Titanium Gray, which is what I have, and then Pink Gold, which will only be available in China. It's got that glass back going on that rounds out to the polished metal frame. Uh, it fits in my hand really nicely, and it's super comfortable to hold, especially without having that edge display like on Samsung phones, which I've grown to dislike because I'm still getting false positive touches. Uh, the six inch full HD HD Plus display is pretty baller. It's an 18 by 9 aspect ratio, just like other flagships out there, and it looks great, but it also supports HDR10, which is pretty neat. So you'll be able to watch Netflix HDR shows and take advantage of that. So that's a thing. But look at those bezels and that screen to body ratio. Ooh -wee! Um, no headphones jack. So there's another brand that's starting to move away from that. Hashtag rest in peace headphone jack but they do include a dongle in the box. All right, so let's talk about what this sexy bitch is packing on the inside, because it's not what's on the outside that counts, it's what's on the inside that matters most. That's what my mom used to tell me when every girl in school turned me down. All right, so we're looking at a Kirin 970 CPU, which is worldwide LTE compatible, but what's cool is that it brings its own AI chip. Now, there's lots of things Huawei demo that it can do, but I think the most notable is when using the camera, which I'll get into in a sec. It's got six gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage, which is awesome, but if you were hoping for an expandable SD card slot, nope. Sorry, it's also got a massive 4,000 milliamp hour battery, and if you use the included supercharger, you get some pretty crazy fast charging speeds. Um, like at the end of the event day, I went back to the hotel and charged it up from 20 to 60% in about 10 to 15 minutes. I was like, what is happening? Is this, is this thing gonna blow up? But no, apparently, from what I understand, these are the first phones in the world to be Rhineland certified. Ry Rhineland certified, which means it's super safe, so you don't have to worry about it blowing up ever, <laughs> which I thought was kind of funny because, you know, Samsung. For cameras, we're looking at a dual Leica camera array. So the bottom camera is a 12 megapixel color sensor with OIS and 2X lossless zoom, and the top camera is a 20 megapixel monochrome sensor. Both cameras feature f1.6 apertures, and with the help of phase detection, autofocus is stupid fast. Now, remember how I mentioned that the new Kirin 970 CPU, which is in this guy, has that AI tech built in? So in addition to other things it can do that I'll get into in the full review, when using the camera, it's capable of detecting what objects you're taking pictures of. So as of right now, it can tell the difference between 13 objects and scenes. So maybe you're taking pictures in the snow, it's gonna be super bright in the highlights, so it'll adjust camera settings so that the picture doesn't look all shitty and blown out. Or maybe you're taking a picture of food or a dog or a night shot. It'll show the icon of what it thinks the scene or object is and adjust things like exposure, you know, sh saturation, shadows, etc., etc. So far, I'm fairly impressed with the cameras as well as some really, really cool Cool software features I'm pretty stoked to get into during my review process. Uh, it is IP67 dust and water resistant, which is nice to see. It comes with Android 8.0 out of the box with EMUI baked on top, which has a ton of settings, even though it doesn't look like it from the main settings menu. Some I really dig and think are practical. Others I'm feeling are a little more gimmicky like in Samsung phones, but we'll see. And the fingerprint reader, oh man, it's not only fast, but it's really accurate too so far. Like, I just half-ass it most of the time and it'll unlock. As long as you fill up the reader with either the side of your finger or the tip or whatever, it'll unlock. Really impressive. Anyways, there's a couple other neat things I didn't touch base on that are actually world firsts, but I'll leave that for the full review. So far, it's a pretty slick device, but I've been experiencing some weird behavior with a few things here and there that should be fixed with some upcoming software updates, so we'll see. Anyways, if you have any questions, drop me a comment down below. I'll be hanging out there for a 
bit to chat with you guys. But if you like the video, show me some love with that like button. And if you're new to my stuff, don't forget to subscribe for new videos every week. Thanks as always for watching everyone. And I'll talk to you all in the next one. Cheers.